Hey, how's it going? I'm Joe with Quality Machine and Automation. We're a machine shop here in Centerville, Utah. We specialize in doing medical. We do a little bit of aerospace. We also do robotics. If you want to keep up to date with what we're doing, you can follow us on Instagram. If you just look up Modern Machining, you'll find us there. We'll keep you up to date with uh, different jobs that we're doing. We'll also give you some tips and just kind of show you how you can also be a successful machine shop. So the way we started was back in 1996. My dad, Shane Cottrell, uh, was working as a machinist and just decided he wanted to do it himself. So he took the money he'd saved up and he just went out and bought some machines. He bought a Fidal, he bought uh, a Victor CNC and a few manuals and uh, just started doing work for, for engineers that he developed relationships with. And over the years, slowly, it's, it's built up and... Um, today I'll, I'll go around and just kind of show you all the machines we have and all of our capabilities and the parts that we're, we're able to do and then how you also can do those parts. So this is our Hi-Hex turn mill and the idea behind this machine uh, was we wanted to bar feed square parts. So, you know, we wanted to get more into bar feeding but we didn't want to just get paid a few dollars per part. So right now we're actually machining a square part uh, at these little fingers that have gone on assembly line. And yeah, you're getting paid good money for it. Um, what you do is, for these square parts on your subspindle, you want to get a two jaw chuck. So you can go over and grab it and also machine uh, the back side of it. So, you know, it's kind of like having a five axis mill, except you're doing smaller parts and then you can just do the whole part in one. So the reason why this is a nine axis machine is because on the twirling spindle you've got your X, Y, and Z, and then you have your B axis that allows it to hit different angles. And then on your sub spindle you have your X, Y, Z also, and then you have your C axis where the, the spindle will move to go to the position you need it to go. And then you also have your C axis on the main spindle. That adds up to nine axes. So this is one of the first machines we bought. It's a 1989 at all. Good heavy box weight machine, three axis. Uh, as you can see up here, you know all this is relatively brand new. All the actuators, the hosing. Uh, we were able to go in and replace the spindle on it uh, about eight years ago, and it's just been a, a really low hours machine, but it's always there when we need it. And, for any of you that want to start a shop in your garage, you know, or already have, you know, a machine like this, any older type machine, you can go in and, you know, fix things, rebuild it, and you have a good machine for 10 to 15 grand, you know, and you're able to, to do jobs on it. We do jobs on this machine for medical companies, and it, it does a great job. Uh, so, yeah, it's a great machine. So this is our A51 Makino horizontal, uh, and it's just great for cutting tools still. It's a nice rigid machine, and you know, it cuts through it like, like butter. It shakes the whole ground when it, it machines it. All the neighbors know that we're machining it when we're doing it. Uh, right now, we're just cutting aluminum on it, but no, it's a great machine. Uh, it's got the fourth axis, you know. You're able to do that tombstone machining on it, so when we're doing these robot parts, uh, it's nice when we can turn that tombstone and 
you know, hit the side when when we have a part that has a that calls out a tight tolerance from this face to this face. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with horizontal mills, uh, there's a built-in pallet changer. So I just opened up the side door where you can be loading parts. And there I'm standing by the main door where the, the main parts will be running. And when those main parts are done, the pallet changer will switch over and machine the other parts. So this is our Hyundai Kia dual spindle single turret lathe that we've got hooked up to the, the bar feeder. Right now we just kind of hand program it. We're in the process of uh, making calls for our software. But yeah. It's, uh, it's bar feeding these parts right here, just simple aluminum parts. Uh, but it's a pretty rigid machine also. You know, you're able to, to get up to your stainlesses, your ink canals, your uh, aerospace materials. And yeah, great machine. This is our, our marble saw. So yeah, it's just an automatic feeding saw, which I don't know how some shops don't live with something like this. You know, you're able to just say the quantity and how much stock you want and how long you want it. Uh, and this saw right here, we actually pretty much got for free. You know, we we spent about seven grand on it, and then the guy that was selling us the saw just gave us seven thousand dollars worth of blades with it. So, yeah, great saw. I mean, a saw like this will pretty much never die. Uh, and yeah, we just repainted it and it looks great and makes our lives a lot easier. So this is our, our Victor CNC. We've got two of these. So you're able to do the, the front of the part and the back of the part. And it's just a nice, uh, easy machine. It's got conversational programming. You know, if you want to face it, you just come here, say face, turn it. Uh, do a groove, tap, whatever you're trying to do. Um, so yeah, good machine. Going back to anyone that would want to, you know, start a shop just in their garage, it's another nice, cheaper machine that you can buy, and you know, it's pretty accurate. Also, we uh, we've been able to hold up to two tents on it, and uh, it's just done a great job. Now we're in our inspection room. Um, and in here we've got our, our CMM. This is a very useful tool when you're trying to hold those really tight tolerances if you're doing medical parts, if you're doing aerospace parts. You're able to come in and uh, you know, pick out a bigger circle like this and you're able to take this probe and go around it, hit about you know, 10 to 15 points and it gives you just a really accurate overall measurement of a circle like that. Uh, and then we've also got our height gauge. We've got our, our hardness tester and then our optical comparator as well to measure different, you know, radiuses and uh, whatnot. Uh, but yeah, you know, we're required to have a room like this because we're ISO certified. And for anyone that's not ISO certified, I would highly recommend it. You know, you're able to get into more medical companies and robotics companies, people that want you filling out inspection sheets. There's a lot of... A lot of paperwork that goes with it, but yeah, again, it's, it's very worth it. Now just to show you some of the cool parts we've done. So this assembly right here, you know, something that we put together, but from this surface to this surface, there's a two tenths tolerance. Um, and in between here and here, there's about six different parts. So, you know, as, as a machinist, you know that, you know, if from there to there is two tenths, then what's the tolerance on all these parts in between? Uh, so what we did was we just, you know, created a fixture and we, we just bent those into place. So we just had an intense fi fixture and if it wasn't within tolerance, we just bend it and then it was there. Now there's that and then you've got stuff like this, you know. Um, 
you've got that thin walled part. We actually 3D melt that on the Makino or horizontal. Uh, but the first question you ask yourself as a machinist is how am I going to hold that? You know, how am I going to hold that part? You know, you can kind of see the surface finish on that. It's a good finish, but that you know, it's a really thin walled part. So you got to come up with you know, different jaws and different fixturings to be able to hold something like that. Uh, but really, you know, we're we're pretty diverse. We can do a lot of different types of types of parts, from smaller parts to medium sized parts. You know, these are some of the these are some of the bigger parts we've done in the past. Also, on the Kino, uh, a big chunk of aluminum. You know, these these went to some snow making guns. And let's see. And then right here, you know, like I was saying before, we uh, we specialize in in plastics. You know, uh, Delrin, different types of plastics is something we've been really good at. You know, getting that good finish on something like that. Um, and then also, you know, some aerospace parts. And that part's up on Mars right now. That's on a rover. So, yeah. And thanks for taking your time to watch this video. If you want to get connected with us, just head over to our Instagram. Give us a follow. Uh, shoot us some DMs if you have any questions or any suggestions as well. We like to uh, post questions on our stories. We would love to get your insights on that. So thanks again.